the reason the good enough scheme is only first order is how we reconstructed the left and the right state that fits into the good enough fox. We treated the solution as if it is piecewise constant in every control volume. So, so let's say if we have a W as a function of X, we only know the cell averages, but we actually don't know how the solution varies in every cell. In the scheme we just coded up, we computed the flux over each interface by treating the left and the right cell to be constants. That's the source of the first order error, right? If you, so, so the error really coming from, let's say, if the real function looks like that. And uh, uh, so I'm trying to make it having the same cell average as the two lines I'm drawing. Obviously, I failed on this one. But like uh, the error you are incurring, which is the difference between the real left state over here and the approximate left state over here, is actually proportional to the cell size, right? So, so basically, if you do a Taylor series analysis, you, you, you can find out that the value of the function at x i plus half minus uh, the f of, well, let, let's just say the, the value of the uh, function at x i plus half and uh, my, uh, my, my uh, cell average is on the order of delta x. Okay, that can be uh, figured out by just uh, writing wi as the cell average and perform Taylor series analysis uh, on, on this. So you can perform Taylor series analysis anchored on this point. You can expand uh, uh, all the values within this integral, and you can integrate out and see that the error is to the first order. All right. So how do we improve on this? The most obvious way to improve on this is not treating the solution as being piecewise constant. All right. And, uh, but the thing is, we have already tried that once and didn't work. So if we treat the solution, for example, as being a linearly varying line between these two solutions, then we can evaluate the flux at this point. But the, po the problem is that it doesn't work across shockwaves. If I have the two cells being on the two sides of the shockwave, well, using a linear approximation is going to give terrible errors and it creates a lot of uh, oscillations around the shock waves. So that's, uh, uh, we have seen this before, but like uh, we can uh, do it again. So, so if we comment out this, this line that instead of using good enough scheme, we say, okay, so this is actually good enough of we plug in both left and right states as the average of the cell and the next cell. So this is the average and uh, we'll use another average as also the right state. So we basically use the same average as left and right state. Uh, and we can see that As the shock wave starts to form, we have this uh, grid by grid oscillation uh, that doesn't really work. <coughs> All right, so so the solution has to be. We want to have a second order approximation, but the reconstruction has to be kind of independent in the left and right cell, right? For uh, for the scheme to work across shock waves. So if I have a shock wave sitting over here. I want the reconstructed value at the left side of the shock wave to be only from the left side of the shock wave and the reconstructed value at the right side of the shock wave to be only from the right side. Okay, a common scheme to use is 
the so-called uh, extrapolation. So what I do is the first step is to use finite difference to compute the derivative or since we are doing partial differential equation the, the derivative of w with respect to x with at each control volume two is i'm going to be saying that my my w at i plus 1 left right on the left of the interface i'm going to approximate it as wi plus the derivative times half of delta xi. Okay, from the Taylor series expansion, you can work out that this term actually cancels with the second order derivative, uh, with the with the first order uh, derivative term in the Taylor series analysis, and actually makes this approximation second order, and uh, correspondingly, fi plus half on the right, which is also needed by the good enough scheme, is approximated as wi plus 1 minus the derivative at i plus 1 times delta x i plus 1 divided by 2. Uh, where? This is actually minus. Right, so, so basically the idea is I have a cell at x i plus half. If I know the value on the left is w i, the slope slope is a derivative at i, then the left value here is basically this is delta x i over 2, right? I'm basically looking at the tangent times the x spacing to get the y spacing so basically this value here is my w i plus half left okay on the other side i'm doing the same if this is w i plus one and i have another slope let's say this one the slope is derivative at x i plus one then this spacing here is delta x i plus 1 divided by 2 and in this case I have to subtract right this is basically the Taylor series approximation yes so in the evaluation of w r the derivative is evaluated at i plus 1 i plus 1 yeah thank you yeah this is my this is my mistake yes thanks okay oh this is at i plus 1 yes and uh, this value is w i plus half right okay so now this is uh, uh, this should provide us a better scheme than what's uh, it's going to provide us a second order scheme and it should behave a lot better than this one right so let's keep this picture over here and uh, uh, and the code up our second order approximation.